Hi there, Hamish McLaughlin here, and a big thanks for watching The Last Time I Cried, brought to you by AIA Vitality. So this episode is a little different. It was actually never supposed to be made public. When Alex Johnson and I sat down to do a pilot, I tried to explain what I wanted the show to be. And then as we were talking, Alex asked me, when was the last time I cried? So I answered, the cameras were rolling. Now I'm apprehensive sharing it, but Alex and Campbell Brown and a few others who shared theirs said I should. Then I thought, if I'm asking people to be vulnerable, so should I. So here's my story. I hope you enjoy it. Hamish, when was the last time you cried? My wife and I met 12 months before we got married and she had a big car accident. I knew that she was going to struggle to have kids and that was a decision we made that whatever happened, it would work out whether we did or didn't have kids. So we went and saw the IVF specialist and it was a big process and for 18 months we went through IVF, IVF, IVF and your first egg didn't work and then operations and second egg and third egg did. There was a whole series of complications during the pregnancy and at eight months there ended up being an emergency C-section but we had this amazing, beautiful, healthy little child who we called Miller. And so as a sort of a naive parent, you sort of think, well, it's all done, we're great now. There's nothing that can happen that will take her away from us. And I just had a heap of missed calls one day from Soph while I was on air and I thought, it's odd because she knows I'm doing the tennis, why would she be calling? And I spoke to her that night and she said, Miller's, something wrong with Miller. It's like, right, she just she sort of has these little twitches and then I can't get her attention for hours. There's something really wrong. We go and see our paediatrician and luckily so had taken videos of Miller having these twitches and she shows the paediatrician and the paediatrician's face just sort of went white. And that was the first time I thought, yeah. So she dials the number and says, you've got to go to um, Royal Children's Emergency now. So like, what's going on? She said, I can't tell you. So a fellow comes out and she's 28 year old junior medical practitioner. And she says, I can't tell you anything. All I know is the head of neurology is upstairs. I'm gonna take your daughter through. And there's 12 people are gonna monitor her over the next two hours. It's like, what, what are we doing here? We haven't got any information. They said, I can't tell you anything. Just know that the best minds in Australia are upstairs. So we've gone from everything's great, healthy eight month old child to, I'm really worried. So two hours later, after they've put 37 electrodes on my daughter's head and they've given us no information really other than that people are watching, the door opens and a guy comes in and he looks at me and he says, I'm Jeremy Freeman. Your daughter has West Syndrome. There's a 10% chance she'll die in hospital. There's an 80% chance she'll have brain damage for life. There's a 10% chance she gets her unscathed. It's like, sorry, what was your name? He said, Jeremy Freeman. I'm head of neurology at Royal Children's. I said, what is West Syndrome? He said, oh, it's a very rare disease. One in 2,500 kids get it. Two thirds of cases, it's a brain cancer, it's a brain tumor, it's a brain lesion. A third of cases, it's none of those, but it's the same outcome. She'll either die, She'll have brain damage for life, or we might get lucky. So your whole world just, yeah. I said, what's your name again? He said, Jeremy Freeman. I said, I picked up Miller. I said, this is Miller Freeman. Save her. The only options we had was to give her the formulas of a steroid so severe that they don't like giving it to animals. We had to give it orally four times a day, seven o'clock, 11 o'clock, three o'clock, and seven o'clock. And it would either stop within six days, the seizures, which were you know, gonna either kill her or affect her for life, or they wouldn't. So we had a family conference call. I told everyone what was happening. And Gillen said, all right, I'll have someone there at seven, 11, three and seven because the doctor said, once you give the steroid for the first time, they'll react to it so badly, you won't be able to open her mouth. You just won't be able to pull it apart and give her the 
steroids, so you're going to have to have help. So the first day, four mils, first time, and then the screaming started. And the doctor said she will lose her voice within 24 hours from screaming in pain. And then she'll get a, an appetite that's bigger than yours. So you won't recognise her in two weeks, but you've got to go for 31 days on this steroid program. It's like, I'm not going to recognise my daughter. He said, you won't recognise her. She'll swell up. So the first day, we do the first batch, and she has five sets of seizures. And the second day, and back in my mind, I'm going, it's got to stop, it's got to stop. Six days or it will never stop. Second day, five sets of seizures. Third day, six sets of seizures. Then on the fourth day, and Gillen did the 7 a.m. session every day, because he'd do it on the way to work. And he grabbed <laughs> Mila and he said, today's the day, she won't, she won't, she won't have a seizure today, today's the day. And I remember him, so I said, I gave him Miller. I left him on the couch, I went to the kitchen, got the steroid out, putting it into the syringe. And by the time I'd got to Gill, she was having seizures in his arms and he was crying and he said, how can, how can it happen to someone who doesn't deserve it? So, yeah, he's sitting there going, am I going to lose the daughter or not? So it was the fourth day, the fifth day, five sets of seizures. So we get to the sixth day and so for and I say, well, you know, what happens if, you know, so seven o'clock, you was there, no one says anything. 11 o'clock, no seizures, three o'clock, seven o'clock. And then we get to putting her to bed and I say nothing to Soph. We get into bed. I said, Soph, just don't say anything. Next day, no seizures. So it's day seven, day eight. And we have to go and see Jeremy Freeman day 14. And we see him and we put the 37 electrodes on again. And I said, how are we going? He said, it's good, but it can click out again. You've got to get to three months. So every day, you know, just looking, going, did she have a seizure? Did she have a... We get through 30 days, stop giving her pregnancy roll, absolutely do not recognise her. My little brother had been away. He comes in to the house. Miller's in the front room playing with another daughter. He says, where's Miller? I said, she's in the front room. He goes, no, no, there's two kids and not one of them's Miller. It's like, that's her. Three-month checkup, we go and see Jeremy Freeman. And he does the scans, does the electrodes on the head, brain patterns back to normal. He said, there's been one case where a child has lapsed, come back at six months. So the next three months, again, every day seemed like a month. You get to the sixth month, check off. We go in and see Jeremy Freeman. And she's got a highlighter in her hand and she's doing different bits and pieces. And he says, can I just have that highlighter? And he hides it a few times and he does a few tests and he says, your daughter is a miracle. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I've just done some cognitive tests that three-year-old children don't pass. And at this point, she's now 15 months. He said, she's through it. She's 10% chance she gets run scared. She's the best response I've ever had to this disease. And that's when I started crying and really cry, and it's like, you just don't know when life's gonna change, you know? You don't know when what is seemingly a perfect world becomes imperfect, nor does it, you know, do you know when it's gonna become perfect again? So when Jeremy Freeman says she's a miracle, it's like, the journey's ended. And every time I put her to bed, I think, how lucky you're here. That was the last time I cried. I'm a ball for my It's funny, Miller saw some photos of herself the other day. She said, why do I have all those things on my head in that photo? Oh, you're, you're sick. She says, but why is it on my head? And she said, does my brain on it? It's like, it is now. She said, was it? I said, there was some, you know, 
Complication. Complications. Yeah. Well, then suddenly she said the other day, she said, I'm okay now. It's like, yeah, you're a miracle. 